What's up, team? Sean from Rest to Live here, and I want to talk about the millionaire calculator. How do you become a millionaire? What will it take? What are the factors that you can influence? What are the factors you can't influence? I'm going to jump in. It's going to be a quick video. I want to drop a lot of knowledge here. All I ask is if you could throw me a like and subscribe, and please share if you think this is valuable. So, team, as usual, let's not waste any time. What I want to understand is starting at what age and finishing at what age will it take for you to hit the $1 million mark? Now, here's the thing we know. Your rate of return can fluctuate. The overall CPI and inflation can also fluctuate. We're going to talk about that a bit. We're going to talk about the S&P index and how I might play this, as well as playing with the numbers a little bit to get a feel for it. And then I would encourage you to go get the calculator, save it, play around with it, and start to build some of your own goals. So let me share my video. Let me share my screen, rather. And let's jump right in and not waste any time. So team, here's the calculator. It's really simple to use. It's really simple to understand. And it's completely free. Go to Google and simply go bank rate millionaire calculator. It should pop up a link and bring you directly to this page. And I want to just be totally clear. I am not affiliated with or work with anything that I'm showing today. I just happen to use these myself. And because they're free, I think they work really well. So this is the millionaire calculator. Before I jump in, though, I want to show you a couple of things that are really important. One thing we understand is that knowing the average rate of return of the market is going to be really important for long-term planning, especially for planning for goals like reaching a million-dollar savings mark. Now, I could have chosen really any website. This was the first one that popped up, and it's a pretty good article. So I, I just want to pull this up and say, from Nerd Wallet, um, it's an article about the average stock market returns. So we can see here that the average market return is about 10%. And it's important to understand that that doesn't mean 10% every year. What it means is over the time that it's being tracked, we see an average of 10%. This is why it's so important to stick to your goals, invest on a recurring basis, don't stop because the market changes, and try not to take any of that money out. And additionally, if you're in something that pays dividends, reinvest those dividends, and it's really going to help to accelerate those returns because that's oftentimes what these returns are indicative of, okay? Now, the reason why I focus on the S&P index, or the S&P 500 index rather, is because it gives you a good cross-threading of the U.S. market. It gives you good predictable returns over the long term, and it's really easy for a beginner to jump in here. Now, I know what you're thinking. There's a million different things you could pick. You don't know much about investing. You're not sure where to begin. I'm not your financial advisor, so I want you to do your own work and your own research, but I want to at least start with one basic idea, and you can build your research off of this. If I was looking for a way to get exposure to the overall market, there's a couple of really simple ETFs that exist. One of which I'm going to show you on the screen is SPY. This is the Spider S&P 500 ETF Trust. This is an ETF that essentially takes in the value of all those companies and represents it via a singular ETF that you can you know, trade, hold in your investments, and it also pays a dividend. I'm not recommending this, but this is a great starting point as a place to start to look at and understand how to get your money into that broad-based investment. Now, we're not talking about returns over a day or five days or one month or even one year. We're really looking at long-term holding periods. And that's why I wanted to really show you what a long chart looks like. Since the inception of this fund, going back to, if I can get it just about right, mid-1993 or early 1993 to today, we're up almost 800%. Now, keep in mind, we were, we were at one point much, much higher here. So we've actually come down quite a bit due to macroeconomic issues, COVID, et cetera. So even with all of those things being said, we're still up about 800% overall since 1993. And I understand that that's a long time horizon, but it was still worth calling out. What I also want to share was even on the five-year chart, we're up about 51%. So just calling it out that <laughs> over the long term, there is an ability to get pretty solid returns. And that's why it's worth thinking about it from that perspective. So let's jump back to the calculator because I want to call it a few things that I think are really important for you to understand. You cannot affect how old you are, okay? Believe me, if I could be younger, I would be, but you can't affect it. So we got to work with that. We can understand what our target age is. I'm picking 65 for the sake of having it being near a retirement number. But if you want to retire early, reach financial independence, if you're starting off really young and you just want to have a target of something really young, hey, go for it. There's nothing stopping you. And that's the beauty of this calculator is it's very flexible. Now, also, we're going to talk about the amount currently invested. I'm going to start with zero to make this really simple. But you might have $500. You might have $5,000. You might have $50,000. Whatever it is, it's really easy to push that in there and get a feel for you know where you're starting at and how that can accelerate the journey to reaching that million-dollar status in your investments. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, your savings per month, obviously pretty simple, right? 
how much money are we putting back into our investments? Now, what I want to call out here is there's lots of different ways to think about this. You might have a 401k or a Roth 401k. You might have an IRA or a Roth IRA. You might have a standard regular investment account. I'm not too concerned for the sake of this simple calculator what and how you invest. It's more important that you are investing as far as tax advantages, as far as um, tax disposition, as far as over pushing taxes off to later. That's where all these different plans come into place and you should absolutely talk to a tax advisor about it. But our goal in doing this video is making it simple to give you a rough idea of what you need to be doing and where you need to be to get where you want, okay? Our expected rate of return is as we already covered over the long term, what we're looking at. I'll update this to 10% in a second just to show the reflection of the number. And that our expected inflation rate, this was brought up on Twitter uh, with some folks who I was talking to today. And I wanna really talk about this for a second. Usually when we think about inflation rates, we're really thinking about CPI data. <clears throat> now the problem with CPI data is it doesn't include food and energy. And if you're like me, the first thing you think about is, well, how can inflation not include two of the things that I need in my life on a regular basis? And I agree. We really want to sometimes bump up the inflation rate just a bit to have a little bit more, more of a realistic approach to what we're trying to get to here. Now, what you'll notice is, depending on how long the time frame is, that inflation rate can really affect the value of that million dollars or not affect it as much if it's a shorter time period to get where you're trying to get to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to proactively change this to 10% for my expected rate of return. But I'm gonna bump up the expected inflation rate just a little bit, and we're gonna to go to 4.5. Now, I understand that right now, inflation is very high and inflation on food and energy is very high as well. But our standard inflation rates are not that high. And typically what we see, especially in the US, is our governments are very likely to do what they can to bring those numbers down. Because let's be honest, each party wants to make sure it's winning. And this is a great thing that they will often target to make life easier or more accessible for the people who live within their, their economy. So play with the numbers. If you think the number's higher, I urge you to change it on your own calculator. If you think it's too high where I have it today, I urge you also to change it. The other thing to think about, and then I'm gonna show you some examples here, is that depending on when you plan to retire or hit this million dollar mark, whatever your goal might be, you may not have the same expenses you have today. So you may not have a mortgage. You may not have to worry about having a car. You may not have to worry about paying high taxes because you might already be retired from your full-time income. Those are things that are important to, to think about. But step one for me usually is what is my goal and how do I get there? And then work out those other details as part of the process. So that's why I want to start here with sort of my approach to it. So with that said, let's do some basic math, okay? Let's say, for example, <clears throat> as you can already see on the screen, I'm 18 years old. I want to hit this mark at 65. I want to have a million dollars when I'm 65, okay? And I have nothing invested because, hey, I'm a teenager. I haven't really focused on this yet, but I have a, maybe I've got a good little side job. I'm going to school. I'm working at nights. You know, want to save a little bit here. If I was to save just $100 per month at an average return over the long term of 10%, and including that 4.5% yield on inflation, we want to understand how long will it take and what will it do to the money. You're going to be pretty surprised here. This is why it's so valuable to make sure that we're consistently investing over the long term. So the good news is if I do all of this, I'll actually be able to hit that millionaire mark at age 64, not actually 65. So that's pretty great news. I'm actually going to hit it sooner than I thought. Down here, though, is where it gets into the weeds a little bit. When I look at that <clears throat> excuse me, let me roll up here. When I hit that million dollar mark at age 64, the value of my portfolio will in fact be over a million dollars. However, here's the problem. In 40 years, give or take, right? A little bit under 40 years, the value of that million dollars is greatly reduced because of that overall inflation rate. So just something to really, really think about in terms of how do we find other ways to preserve our capital, to save more, to really compete with that overall inflation rate. Now, I know that's extreme, so I just want to share that it doesn't always work this way, but it's important to understand, in theory, that inflation can offer a huge hindrance to your goals. Now, let's let's change up the numbers a little bit here. Let's say maybe you're out of school or you've been working for a couple of years and starting to make a little bit better money. Let's say you're actually 25 now. And instead of savings per month, of 100, we're able to save 300 a month, okay? Well, more great news. At 300 per month, even if I start at zero, I'll actually hit millionaire status at age 60. Well, that's pretty cool. But what if I'm 35 and I haven't actually saved any money, okay? What will I need to do to hit that million dollar status? Well, let's 
try 750. Let's see what happens there. Oh, wow. Great news. At 750, I'm actually hitting millionaire status at age 61, and I'll end up with a 1.56 or so in savings. So maybe I don't even need to save that much. Maybe we drop this down to 600 and see what happens. Wow, that's pretty good, actually. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's see 550. Boy, oh boy, this is pretty, this is turned out pretty good for our friend here. So even at $500 a month at age 35 till 65, assuming 10% and 4.5 down below, I'm at 65 and hitting that million dollar mark at about a million 39,000. So pretty cool stuff. Where I think there's even more fun things you can do with the calculator is if you think about the FIRE movement, right? That financial independence retire early. Maybe, we, maybe we're not so interested in how long it takes to get to a million, but where I'll be by a certain age, okay? So let's just say in the same example, I'm a 30 year old. I really don't wanna work past age 45. I haven't been able to save any money just yet, but what I can do is put away 500 a month. Well, in that of 15 years, because again, time is the most important metric here. In those 15 years, I'm only gonna have about $200,000. So maybe not enough to really retire, but what could I do if I'm really, really focused on that fire lifestyle? Maybe I can find a way to bump this number up to 1500 a month. So now at 1500 a month, starting at zero at age 30, by the time I'm 45, I'll actually have $602,000. But look what's really interesting here. If you waited just four more years, that 600,000 becomes a million. So think about that, right? By adding a little bit more time to the equation, we greatly accelerate our savings rate and our ability to have more of that money to help us retire. And this is where it gets really, really fun too, right? Is you can start to play with these different numbers because that same 30 year old who wants to hit that status at 45, can save 1500 a month, but what if they actually had 25K already in savings? Well, look at that, right? Now they'd end up hitting 706,000 and they could actually be a millionaire at only 48, so only an extra three years. So I want you to play around with the calculator and then in the comments below, let me know, you know, what are your goals? What age are you trying to hit a million dollar status? What kind of interest rate do you think you can get? You know, where are you starting? Where are you finishing? Don't share all your personal details, of course, but I'd love to hear what you're focused on, what you're trying to achieve, and if the calculator was there any help to you. So with that team, I'm going to keep it short. I appreciate your time. I just want you to understand that anyone can be a millionaire. It's just math. It's just math. So the beauty of that is that no matter where you are, you can find a way to get there, whether it's time, whether it's amount per month, whether it's initial savings rate, or whether it's changing the, the, the age that you'd like to hit that goal. You really do control a lot of those factors and you absolutely can find ways to make it work. So with that, I hope you give it a try. I wish you nothing but success in all of your goals. And what I would really urge is aim for the moon, aim really high, aim to get off this phone and look up that calculator and do some good things. Team, see you later. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks as always.